Stand as the family make their way to the seat. Thank you. congregation may be seated. First of all, could I welcome each and every one along to this special service of thanksgiving for the life and testimony of our sister, Ethelyn Holmes. And I know that the family really appreciate your presence here today. Could I, on behalf of the session and committee, congregation of our church here in Tandragi, express my deepest sympathy to the Holmes family circle and the passing of our sister, Ethelyn, to Tommy, to Norma and Ralph, to Gillian and Andrew, also to the grandchildren, Lee, Jamie, Scott, Macy and Toby, also the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, Phoebe and Sophie, and to the wider family circle. We have been remembering you around the throne of grace and prayer over these past days especially in your bereavement and we'll continue to do that in the days that lie ahead. We're going to open our service today by singing a lovely hymn, the first hymn in the order of service. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. We're going to stand to sing the four verses that are in the sheet, and let us think of the words as we sing them. Thank you.
congregation may be seated. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. And as we come to pray today, let us especially remember the family that mourn, praying that the Lord will give grace and help even in the service this afternoon. Our loving and eternal Heavenly Father, we bow humbly and reverently in your presence today again. In the name of the Lord Jesus, our wonderful Savior. And O oh God, as we come today, we especially remember the family that mourn. We think especially of Tommy. We thank thee for him, O Lord, and we pray that Tommy might know the help of the Lord this day, the nearness of the Lord. Remember Norma and Gillian. O oh God, remember Rolf and Andrew, and the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren, and indeed the wider family circle. We thank the Lord that thou art the God of all comfort and that we can cast all our burdens upon thee. We come before thee today, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we thank thee for the life and the testimony of Ethelin. And we thank the Lord especially for that day in her life when she came and trusted thee as her own and personal Savior. And Lord, what a comfort it is today to know that She's absent from the body, but she's present with the Lord. We thank thee, Lord, for the blessed hope of the child of God. We praise thee, Lord, for the mansions above. And, O oh God, we thank thee, Lord, that our sister has gone home to be with Christ. O oh God, we pray, however, that the family might know the strength of the Lord today. We thank thee for the family. And we pray, Lord, that you would sustain them in their hour of grief. For Lord, it's always sad to lose a loved one to the grave. And we just pray, Lord, today that they might find comfort in this service. And O oh God, that you would strengthen them and help them. And Lord, we'll be very careful to give to thee the praise, the glory, and the honor. Remember those that will take part in the service now. We pray, Lord, you'll give help. In our Savior's precious name we ask it. Amen. We're going to ask uh, Norma and Gillian to come now, and they're going to read a poem to us. God bless you, ladies. Her journey's just begun. Don't think of her as gone away. Her journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is only one. Just think of her as resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort mm. where there are no days or years. Think how she must be wishing that we could know today how nothing but our sadness can really pass away. And think of her as living in the hearts of those she touched for nothing loved is ever lost and she was loved so much. Thank you, ladies. That was a very touching tribute to your mom. Now we're going to ask Ralph to come. And Ralph's going to read the scriptures to us. And the portion of scripture that Ralph's going to read is John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Thank you, Ralph. <clears throat> Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. <laughs> If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Mm. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we not know whether thy ghost. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but me. Amen. Thank you, Ralph. I'm going to read another portion of Scripture now, and it really fits in to what Ralph was reading there. It's found in the last book of the Bible, in the book of the Revelation. And again, it's a very familiar portion of Scripture, I'm sure, to most of us, it's Revelation chapter 21. And here we have 
John on the Isle of Patmos under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he writes these tremendous words. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will, unto, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. And we know the Lord will bless the reading of his precious word to all of our hearts uh, today. Ethan and Tommy started to come to the church here in Tondragee over 10 years ago. And when they were in good health, they were always found in the house of God at all the services. And Ethan will be greatly missed by the congregation here in Tondragee. Ethan and Tommy always came to the senior citizens' outing every year. And any time we had a church dinner, they were always in attendance. And they always enjoyed the fellowship at those occasions. Personally, it was a joy for me to visit them in their home. And I always received a very, very warm welcome from Ethan. I can still hear her saying as I would go through the door, Tommy, it's the minister. And she would always give me a very warm welcome. And I certainly did appreciate that welcome and the fellowship that we had together uh, in the home. I never forget when I first came to Tondragee over six and a half years ago, it took me a while to pronounce Ethan's name right. So one Sunday morning after a few weeks of being here, I said to her at the door as she left the morning service, good morning, Ethan. And she turned to Tommy and with a big smile on her face, she said, Tommy, the minister has finally got my name right. And we always had a good laugh at that ever since that day. And certainly she was one who could take a joke. And she had a good sense of humor. Ethan was one of seven children, three boys and four girls, being the youngest girl. She was born Ethan McMurray. She grew up on a farm outside Portadown and attended Seagull Primary School, and the girls began in Seagull as well. After leaving school, she worked in various factories before going to work in the Ulster carpet mills. Tommy and Ethan were married in 1958, and they set up home together at Clonrola between Portadown and Lurgan before moving to their home on the Mullahead Road outside Tondragee, where they lived for most of their married life. They were happily married for 65 years. And during those years, they had two daughters, Norma and Gillian, whom they loved very much indeed. Ethelyn was a keen gardener, and she loved animals, especially donkeys. She had a rescue dog called Roxy, and every time she went out for a meal, she would bring something home in her bag for Roxy. Ethan, of course, as we know, came to know the Lord as her Savior many years ago. And from that day when she was saved, she went on with the Lord until the day the Lord brought her home to heaven. She loved the Lord. And thank God today we don't say 
goodbye, we just say a good night. For those of us who are saved, thank God we will meet her in the morning. I want to pay a tribute today to Ethelin's family for all their love and care that they showed towards her and Tommy and continue to show towards Tommy. Ethelin was indeed a lady who was loved by her family. And what a tribute that is today. Ethelin's death, of course, as we know, came very suddenly. It was a shock to us all, to her family and to her neighbors. But thank God, Ethelin's family loved her so much. And I know that she, they wouldn't want her to return now from heaven where she is. But you know, although Ethelin's passing was a shock to us all, it was not a shock to God. The Bible tells us that our death is appointed by God. In Hebrews chapter 14, verse 5, it says that God hath appointed our bounds that we cannot pass. Therefore, early on Sunday morning, the Lord called Ethelin home to be with himself. With that in mind, I want to draw your attention to a verse in the Psalms. It's Psalm 48 and verse 14. It's a wonderful text of Scripture. I don't know whether you've ever considered it before, but this is what it says. For this God is our God forever and ever, and He will be our guide even unto death. That's a tremendous text of Scripture. And in that text of Scripture, three things are emphasized to us about the death, especially of the Christian, the child of God. First of all, of course, we have here an event that is certain for us all, the event of death. We cannot stay the hand of death. Death is certain for each and every one of us. In Hebrews 9, verse 27, it says, and it is appointed unto men once to die. Indeed, in 2 Samuel 14, verse 14, it says, for we must needs die and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither does God respect any person. And it was Job who said, For I know that thou wilt bring me to death, and to the house appointed for all living. And the truth is that even the child of God must face death. The godliest saint will have to enter into the valley of the shadow of death. And on Sunday morning, our sister Ethelin Holmes came face to face with death. But thank God, Ethelin was well ready for that appointment. She always used to say, I'm ready to go. And so she was. Because of that day in her life, many years ago, when she trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as her own and personal Savior, thank God she was ready and she was prepared for death and for the great eternity. My friend, let me ask you very simply before we go any further, are you ready for death? Are you prepared for death? We've already emphasized there that death came for Ethelin so suddenly on Sunday morning in the early hours. But if that had have been you, where would your soul be today? It's a challenge for each and every one of us. I pray that we're all ready and prepared for death and for heaven. The problem, of course, with death is that we don't know when it will take place. It was Job who said, Now I am old. I know not the day of my death. And that's the problem with death. That's why the Bible emphasizes, Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It's imperative that we prepare for death and that we prepare now as the Bible emphasizes to us. But there's something else I want you to notice here. Not only an event that is certain, but I want you to notice in the text here a presence that is assured for the child of God throughout life. Our text says, For God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide. As far as the child of God is concerned, we have one who guides us throughout life, and that one, of course, is our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. A guide is one who leads. A guide is someone that you follow. 
But when we think of Christ, the guide of the Christian, we think of one who not only leads, but one who protects, one who gives strength, and one who never leaves us nor forsakes us. You see, the Christian's guide is one who is with his people when they're sick, when they're cast down, when they're in trouble, and when perhaps all others have forsaken them. Thank God throughout life. From that day, Ethelin came to know the Lord Jesus as her Savior. Ethelin knew this guide, and she knew that the Lord was with her throughout life's journey. But notice what the psalmist says here. Notice that the psalmist speaks of a personal relationship with the Lord, and that's what we've been emphasizing, that Ethelin had that personal relationship with the Lord. The psalmist says, this God is our God forever and ever. And because Ethelin Holmes had that personal relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ, she knew the presence of the Lord with her, guiding her throughout life's journey. In Psalm 32, verse 7, the psalmist said, when thinking about how the Lord guided him throughout life's journey, he said this, "'Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye.'" And the psalmist knew that throughout life's journey that he had one who would be with him, one who would never forsake him, and one who would be his guide. You see, throughout life, Christ is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. In that day, Ethelin's life, when she trusted the Lord as her Savior, Christ became not only her Savior and her Redeemer, but he also became her guide throughout life's journey, one who would be with her and who would never leave her nor forsake her, one that she could depend upon. My friend, do you know this guide today? Do you know this Savior? Do you know this Redeemer? Thank God the Lord Jesus died upon the cross, and He shed His precious blood in Calvary's tree, and He rose again in order to be our Savior, in order to be our guide, in order to be our Redeemer. And I pray today, if you're found at the funeral service, and you don't know Christ as your Redeemer, that even today that you would come and put your faith and trust in Him. But this text goes on. It's a tremendous text because not only do we have here an event that is certain, a presence that is assured for the child of God throughout life, but we have a victory that is eternal in eternity. You see, the text says this, and I want you to look at it very carefully. For this God is our God forever and ever he will be our guide even unto death. Now, there's something wonderful here that I don't want you to miss. Not only will the Lord be the guide of the child of God unto death, until death comes, but He will be the guide of the child of God beyond death. And really, that's what this text of Scripture is speaking about. Matthew Henry, the great commentator, Bible commentator, he said this concerning this verse, and I'll read it to you. The Lord will be our guide above death. He will so guide us as to set us above the reach of death, so that death shall not be able to do us hurt or harm. He will be our guide beyond death. The Lord will conduct and convey us safely to death, through death, and beyond death, down to death, and up again to glory. You know, Psalm 73, verse 24 says, and I think it sums it up, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, the psalmist says, and afterward receive me to glory. The great blessing of being saved and being a Christian and a child of God is that at death, Christ will bring us home to glory. It's not what the psalmist said again in Psalm 23. The psalmist David was thinking about dying, and he was thinking about what would happen when he would come to die and then beyond the grave. And he said this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We well, thank God the Lord Jesus Christ is not only the guide of the Christian throughout life's journey, but he's the guide right to death and then beyond death. The Apostle Paul summed it up like this when he was writing to Timothy, for I am now ready to be offered, speaking about his death, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Here's the wonderful truth of it all. When Ethelin passed away so suddenly on Sunday morning, her Savior, who had guided her throughout her life, took her hand and guided her through death into her eternal rest in heaven. And because of her faith in Jesus Christ, she is now with Christ in heaven, which is far better. Thank God, because of the Savior and what he had accomplished on Calvary's cross, and because Ethelin had her faith in the Savior, and in his finished work, when death came, it was only a passing from this scene of time to heaven. Isn't it wonderful today to know that our loved one is with he in heaven, that our friend has gone home to be in heaven? But my friend, what about you? There's a challenge here to each and every one of us if death were to come to you suddenly as it came to Ethelin on Sunday morning, how would it be with your soul? These are things that you need to consider because the Bible tells us, of course, that we're all going to die and go out into the great eternity. But where will we spend eternity? Will we spend eternity in heaven with Christ or in hell without him? That's why the Lord Jesus died upon the cross. That's why he rose again. That's why we have the gospel preached. That's why the word of God is so clear when it tells us the reason why the Savior came into this world. And very soon, in a few weeks' time, the Christmas period, we'll be thinking especially again of the Savior coming into the world to be our Savior and our Redeemer. My friend, where do you stand this afternoon? Do you know Ethelin's Savior? Are you sure that you're born again of the Spirit of God? There's a hymn we often sing, We're going home to glory soon to see the city bright, to walk the golden streets of heaven and bask in God's own light. But some of you are out of Christ and held by many a snare. We cannot leave you lost and lone. We want you over there. Will you meet Ethelin again? I pray that you will. And thank God you can by coming and accepting Ethelin's Savior and trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Redeemer. This God is our God forever and ever. He is our guide even unto death and beyond death. What a wonderful text it is and what a wonderful word of comfort today. And I pray that God will bless his word to all of our hearts, especially the family, that they will take comfort from the scriptures this afternoon. And that even through the word of God this day, that the Lord will challenge each and every one of us to be ready and prepared when our death comes. Let's all bow in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we do thank thee and praise thee for your presence with us today. We thank Thee for the Word of God that has been read. And we thank Thee, Lord, for the comfort of Thy Word today. We thank Thee, Lord, for the privilege of knowing Ethelin Holmes. And, O oh God, we recognize and that her death was sudden, it was unexpected in many ways. But, O oh God, we thank Thee that she was ready and prepared. And we do pray, Lord, that each and every one of us will be ready and prepared when the call comes for us to go out to meet God into eternity. 
We do thank Thee for the Lord Jesus who laid down His life for ransom for the many, shed His precious blood in order to provide eternal salvation for us. And, O oh God, I pray today that You would challenge all of our hearts. For, Lord, the Bible tells us we have been reminded about it again that it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, there's an after this, the judgment. For God hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world. O oh God, I pray that each one at the funeral service today will make their calling an election sure. For us in Jesus' precious, precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing uh, the second hymn in the order of service. It's a lovely hymn. Above thy known ambitions here, another voice is sounding clear. It is the call of God to thee, O leave thine all and follow me. This came, became a, a favorite hymn of Ethelin's after uh, my ordination service six and a half years ago. She had never heard this hymn before, and we sang it that night at the uh, installation service. Uh, and it became a real favorite of Ethelin's. We're going to sing it and think of the words as we stand to sing this lovely
Now, after we close in prayer, we'd ask you to remain standing. And after the prayer, the family are going to go down to the graveside for a private family committal. But we'd ask the rest of the folk in the church here to make their way through these side doors. One of the men will open these doors, and that link will bring you through to the church hall, and you can get your tea. So immediately the family leave, you can make your way uh, in for the tea. And the family certainly would uh, tell me, ask me to invite you all to remain for something to eat. Let's bow in prayer. Father in heaven, again, we just commit our way to thee. We pray, Lord, now as we would go down to the graveside that you would give grace and give help to the family. And in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore.